We are in a time where there are some amazing high-end 3D printers out there that will deliver simply outstanding results out the box. However, spending over a thousand dollars isn't for everyone and there are still some very interesting options in the sub $400 category. One of them is this, the Artillery Sidewinder X2. It is a direct drive 3D printer that not only will print standard filaments, it will do flexibles as well. It has a mains powered heat bed or to bed leveling and it is one of the simplest printers to assemble that I have ever seen. In this video I'm going to walk you through the Sidewinder X2's features and capabilities, I'm going to share with you my thoughts and hopefully give you an overview if this printer is something you should consider looking at. Now just to be clear up front, Artillery did send me this printer for free, however they have not paid me to make this video, they have not seen this video before it's been published and as always my thoughts are entirely my own. Anyway, let's get on with it and let's take a closer look at the features and specifications of the X2 first of all. The Artillery Sidewinder X2 features their Titan Direct Drive Extruder with a Volcano nozzle allowing for higher flow rates. It has a large 300 by 300 print bed which allows a print area of up to 300 by 300 by 400 and this is a fixed glass bed which is mains powered meaning that it can get from 0 to 110 degrees in under 2 minutes. The printer is fitted with a dual stepper z-axis which is going to offer extra stability as well as precision in print. Each of the axes is fitted with belts as well as rollers which does make adjustment nice and easy and overall it is one of the quieter printers that I have used. This is partly because of the slower speed but also the stepper motors are not the loudest that I've seen either. The X2 is also fitted with a bed level sensor allowing it to detect any variances on that glass bed. It has a built in touchscreen for controlling the system as well as a filament run out sensor on board as well. Getting your print started is really easy on this, it has a micro SD card as well as a USB A port for uploading from a flash drive. There's also a USB type B port on the side for connecting it directly to your computer and around the back you will find the mains input as well as the voltage selection for both 110 and 240. There are some nice little additions with the printer as well, they include a little toolkit for getting it set up and there's also a filament holder on the top that mounts to the top of the printer allowing you to feed it through the filament sensor and into the extruder nice and easily. Now as I mentioned earlier the Sidewinder X2 is one of the simplest printers that I have had to set up. It comes basically built in two separate parts, you have the base part and then you have the top Z axis part which all comes pre-assembled. Now these slot together with a nice connection mechanism which is like a PCI or PCB slotting connector. You simply then place the top section onto the bottom and tighten up the four bolts from underneath, plug in the stepper motor wires, remove bits of tape and the cable ties that hold the z-axis in place and basically it is ready to go. It is one of the simplest printers that I have come across to put together out of the box. Now one of the interesting features about the Sidewinder X2 is this bed. As I mentioned already, it is a fixed glass bed. So what that means is there's no removable build plate. There are four screws underneath for the manual leveling of the bed, but there's also then the built-in bed level sensor that will take out any small variations as well. Because though this is a fixed bed, you do need to make sure that you do get the tuning precise. There is a tuning program built into this printer that you can follow through. It will allow you to actually check the Z height on each axis or each corner I should say. That way you're able to try and get the bed in as close as possible. If you're someone that hasn't done manual bed leveling before or you haven't done it in quite some time it will take you a little bit to get used to it. What I have found with this printer is it is very sensitive to the bed leveling because of that glass bed and there is a built-in manual Z adjustment as well but it does doesn't have the greatest amount of steps and what you might find is you need to compensate for that with the adjustment screws rather than on the Z adjustment. It's also worth mentioning that if you're doing the bed leveling on this printer you need to do it with the bed and nozzle hot. I have found in my testing that there is quite a bit of drift on that z-axis with regards to the height when it's cold compared to hot and if you were to do the z with no temperature on board there you're going to find it is well off when you actually come to print. 
Whilst that print bed isn't actually removable, the interesting feature is the fact that it is mains powered. Most beds on 3D printers are powered by say 24 volts off the power supply, but this has full mains voltage. There's a nice thick cable that goes to the back of it. And what that's going to allow is that bed to get up to temp far quicker than you would get on a lower voltage system. I see no issues with regards to safety on this because it is 240, but it does get hot very quickly and you should take that into account when using it. One of the other nice features, as I mentioned on this printer, is that it does have that built-in touchscreen. Now this is a color touchscreen and it isn't the most sensitive, but it does allow you to do all of the main functions. The menus are fairly clear and straightforward. About my only complaint with the menu system on this printer is that there isn't as many settings as I would like with regards to adjusting the Z height. There is a fixed height adjustment there, but overall it gets the job done. It allows you to change the filament, set the temperatures, control the printer and get a print going without any issues at all. Now there are a lot of nice little attention to detail features on this printer that I haven't mentioned yet. One of them is the fact that the hot end does come with a silicon sock as standard. It does have that extruder, what they call their Titan extruder with that volcano nozzle and it does have a nice and easy loading mechanism. It's all quite open actually and you can easily see in there, you can easily load the filament, there's a button to release it as well and you can actually see all of that mechanism as it prints. Really I've got no complaints with regards to that at all. It has plenty of cooling on board as well for both the extruder and the print head. And the nozzle seems to do an okay job of spreading that air around the hot end to ensure your print cools as it progresses. Now just to go over some of the more detailed specs on the X2 that I haven't mentioned in this video yet. The printer, as I've said, has a build volume of 300 by 300 by 400. This does make it a very tall printer as well and that is something you should take into account. It has a build speed of 60 to 150 millimeters a second and a travel speed of up to 250 millimeters a second. As I said, the bed is a tempered glass bed with a coating and it is AC and it runs directly off your mains voltage. It supports a filament diameter of 1.75mm as we would expect and it has a 0.4mm nozzle which supports a nozzle temperature of 180 to 240 degrees C and they state the heat up time for the nozzle is under 3 minutes. Now as I mentioned it does feature a volcano nozzle but they don't go into specific flow rates that it is capable of. Next I want to walk you through some of the results that I've got from the Sidewinder X2 and then at the end I'll come back and share with you some of my thoughts. These things always start with the usual tests, so I've done some benchies as well as some other test prints like cubes as well. And overall, other than some tuning on the Z-axis, everything comes out okay. Although I am seeing a little bit of bubbling around the bottom layer on the benchies. Not exactly sure what the cause of that is at this time. I'm not seeing it on other prints. It may be a slicing issue though in Cura. Overall, once you do have it tuned in well, you do get good results from the printer. It is not the fastest printer in the world. However, it does deliver nice overall prints. What I will say though is it really does deliver in flexibles. The TPU prints off this were simply perfect. I was actually blown away at just how good the TPU bracket came out. Very little tuning. I did use my own Cura profile for this. I'm using the same Spark 95A and it just came out spot on. So if you're looking to do some flexible prints, whether that be for FPV or anything else, this printer will certainly deliver in that area. Now, as I mentioned earlier, it can be a challenge to get the Z right, but it can also be a challenge to get the prints off the bed as well. Because it is a glass bed and it isn't removable and you can't flex it, it means that you will at times need to use something like a scraper to get the prints off or carefully tap them with something like a piece of wood. Now here is a selection of just some of the prints I've done on this printer. There's a couple of full ones, there's a couple of failed ones. There's also one that was successful, but I ended up breaking it, getting it off the bed, which we'll take a look at in a minute. Now, overall, I haven't had any major issues. There were some Z-axis issues at the start, and that's this print here, for instance. This broke free from the bed. It had shifted after my initial calibration, and you can see that turned into a mess. There's another one there that I stopped printing, and the reason I stopped that was we were getting quite a large 
large elephant's foot at the bottom here. Again, Z-axis issue, not getting it quite right. But once I got it dialed in, this was another test print here just to check it. And I stopped this before we went any further. You can see that there is some lines around the side, like this little bubbling effect around there. We'll take a look at it on one of the others in a minute. But overall, once I got it dialed in, the print quality has been very, very decent. Ignore the seam line that's just off the slicer. And you can see that there's a little bit of a seam line that runs along the bottom there. You're seeing it on this green one a bit more, but the overall output from these benches is just really, really good. They are as clean as I've had on any other printer. There's that one there in pet G, just to give you an idea on that one. Again, if we look at the bottom layer, that's really good. We can easily see the writing there. It's the same on those ones there as well. If we look on the back, the text is readable, just not as easy as it is on some of the others, but it is visible. But I can say that the overhangs look good. It does deliver a good print. I then did some calibration cubes just to check the measurements. Again, I was a little under on this one. This one was coming in simply because of the elephant's foot. I don't know how easy you can see it there, but I was squeezing in a bit too much on that one. And then another print here with some more adjustments got us about spot on. And then finally, there's these two here. There is that TPU bracket, which I showed you in the build. This just come out fantastic. Very little stringing. And this is an old a spool of TPU. This isn't a new one at all. Bottom layer is tidy. It's just perfect. I'm really impressed with how this printer did on flexibles. And then this then was one of those movable toys. We've got the little octopus. The legs are not as free as I would like. There are periods with per piece periods. There are areas where they are binding a little bit. That one's broke free there. I haven't actually spent any time moving all of these individually. The tolerances are a little bit tight, I would say, but it does loosen up once you give it a bit of movement. But the overall print quality is good. You can see the seam line at the back. Again, it's done an okay job on that. No issues at all. And then if we look at the face area, it's come out tidy. The top good again. Really, there's very little I can complain about. The final one I just want to show you was the one I broke removing it off the print bed. This one I actually tapped with the back of the scraper to try and get it off. And I ended up actually snapping it off there. But what it does show is the infill around there looks good. And again, it's a nice tidy print. I have to say, there's really nothing I can complain about overall with the print quality. R the real key to this printer is getting the Z right, and once you've got that, it will deliver the results. Okay, so to share with you my thoughts on the Artillery Sidewinder X2. Overall, I think this is a really good budget printer, and I'm going to put it into the budget category because whilst it is retailing at 400 I have seen it as low as 300 or even less. For your money, you're getting a printer here with a direct drive extruder, it's got auto bed levelling, it's got a massive print volume, and it has all of the main features you need to get decent results. It has that mains heated bed, which is nice as well, and whilst it certainly is not the fastest printer in the world, in fact, it's one of the slowest I've used, it is very, very quiet as well. So there are trade-offs to things like speed because you do get the benefits in noise. The menu system isn't the best, but it does what you need it to do. Personally, I'd just like to see a few more adjustments around the Z axis, allowing you to just fine tune it a little bit better. And about the only major complaint that I have got on this printer is with regards to that bed not being removable. The fact that it is mains powered is very good. It heats up very fast, but you are having a fixed bed here and sometimes getting the prints off this can be quite difficult. There are times where I've actually had to tap them off with a piece of wood. I do miss not having that removable sprung bed where you can simply lift it off, remove the print without potentially causing any damage. I did actually break one of mine getting it off the bed simply because it was stuck so hard. Overall, I think you're getting a good printer here for the money. It does a decent job on the normal filaments and it prints Flexibles TPU very, very well as well. So if you're into FPV and you're looking to get a cheaper printer to allow you to be able to print your own stuff, it is absolutely going to be worth a look. 
So if you have found this video interesting, please do let me know what you think in the comment section. Furthermore, if you have any questions, please do put them in the comment section as well. I'd like to say a thank you to Artillery for sending this one over for us to review. There will be a link to it in the description as well if you'd like to check it out. Furthermore, I'd just like to say if you have found this video interesting, please do make sure you are subscribed to the channel. And if you're interested in seeing more content like this, please do check out some of the other videos. Finally, I just want to say if you'd like to support the channel, there are links to my Patreon as well as buy me a coffee in the description. I want to say a massive thank you to all of my patrons for their support. I would not be able to do this without their ongoing support on there. And if you'd like to support us moving forward, please do consider checking it out. Anyway, that's it from me on this one. Stay safe. I'll speak to you soon.